Hi, welcome to this video. I'm Niels Hagort and I work for VMware in the Cloud Platform Business Unit. In this video, I would like to talk to you about the vMotion process. vMotion has been around a while now. We actually introduced it in 2003. And over time, we developed it to support new technologies. Looking at vMotion and what it does, in essence, it's the ability to have a virtual machine running on the source ESXi host. And we can now migrate the active state of that virtual machine to the destination host. The important thing to understand here is that while being live migrated, the application keeps on running. There is no downtime involved. We do have some requisite, prerequisites for v v motion to, um, to support vMotion. The most important thing is that we need a vMotion enabled network between the ESXi hosts. Once this is set up, we can now initiate a vMotion operation from the vCenter server UI. We can also leverage tools like DRS, our distributed resource scheduling feature. DRS balances workloads across ESXIOs within a cluster. Now DRS is able to automatically initiate vMotion operations. Let's look at what a vMotion process actually is. Okay, so now we know the basics of vMotion. Let's dig a little bit deeper in what is going on when you hit that initiate, when you initiate a vMotion process. So first of all, we have vCenter server, right? And in vCenter server, what is happening is that we have started a long running task. Now, in that long running task, what it basically kicks off at first is a compatibility check. That compatibility check is all about versioning. So what virtual machine needs to be migrated and what are the ESXi source and what is the ESXi destination host? What versions do they run and is, it actually comp is the VM compatible to run on the destination host? Once that compatibility check is done, we will now create a migration spec. This migration spec has a lot of details on the VM itself. So what, are the, uh, what is the virtual machine hardware that is configured for that VM? What, is, uh, what are other VM options that, is, that are configured for that specific VM? What about the vMotion network details from the, between the source and destination ESXi hosts? All that information is bundled in this migration spec. Now, this migration spec is passed on to the VPXD process. This is the virtual provisioning X daemon that is running inside the v, uh, virtual center server. VPXD will now connect to the ESXi hosts, both the source and destination host. And it will communicate to the VPXA, which is the agent that communicates with the daemon running inside virtual center server and the VPXA is obviously then running inside the ESXi host. Now VPXA will communicate with the host D process running inside the ESXi host. Now host D has all the information about the host itself, uh, about the hardware and more importantly from a vMotion perspective, it owns the VM state. So host D knows what state the VM is running in. Host D will then go ahead and talk to the VMX process, not to be confused with the VMX configuration file of a virtual machine, but the VMX process. Now VMX process handles all the IO to devices that are not critical to performance for that VM. VMX will talk to virtual machine monitor, VMM, now VMM process does handle all the IO requests to uh, all the devices that are critical for uh, VM, for virtual machine performance. So this is about all the compute resources, CPU, memory, etc. VMM and VMX actually set the virtual machine to an intermediate state. 
So we can now not change the VM configuration while being in a vMotion process. Once this is set up, these two will talk to the kernel module. And this module is basically the code for vMotion. Once this is all set up, we begin communication with the destination ESXIOS, where basically the same is happening. So VPXA is talking to host D, and host D is talking to VMX. VMM is not involved on the destination side. And that is because the virtual machine still lives on the source host, right? So that is where the memory is active right now. And virtual machine monitor, like we said, handles the I.O. to the memory as well. So VMX will call out the kernel module on the destination host. And between the kernel modules on the source and destination hosts, sockets will be opened on the vMotion network, the vMotion enabled network. I must say. So once this is all set up, we now have everything in place for the VM to be migrated from the source ESXIOS to the destination ESXIOS. In the next video, we will talk about what is going on from a memory pre-copy perspective. Thank you for watching.